You selected the uh, presentation for macroeconomics, supply and demand. It's a uh, part of the uh, subject, um, construction economics one. Before we go too far, let's just summarise some of the course requirements. Um, if you have any questions throughout the course, um, feel free to contact uh, myself um, via email or um, on one of the uh, Q&A forums on the Moodle site. Um, don't forget the student forums. You can uh, exchange information and questions amongst yourselves. Um, also, uh, presentation and assessment format. Be very clear about those and uh, due dates for assessments. Also, uh, I remind you that uh, this presentation is uh, uh, a summary of the uh, uh, course notes and uh, the, the uh, another educational tool uh, for you to uh, uh, become familiar with the uh, information on macroeconomics and it's not a substitute for the study guide. Okay, so macroeconomics is a, a look at the whole or operation of the a total economy systems. Um, it, it's probably easier to discuss it as a, a study of complex models and policies. Um, and it considers the world economy, the national economy, um, and that includes inflation, unemployment, banking, and so forth. So what we need to uh, understand wi with uh, uh, macroeconomics is that politics and economies are sort of entwined and bound together. Um, and so the polit any political decisions made uh, for a large community or a country have uh, major economic consequences and social effects. Um, so it, it's all dependent on consumption, production, um, exchange and distribution of uh, goods and materials. I think it's important to note here also that um, you can look at one extreme case of communism um, which is referred to the one-party state. And in this uh, instance, uh, communism believes that the government is the sole employer and the sole means of production. The opposite to this is pure capitalism, where political philosophy in which the role of government is minimal um, uh, and it's the private sector which owns the production. Um, we can have a primitive type of economy and these are economies that lack certain elements of both. If we come away from the primitive uh, uh, economy and talk more about the advanced economy, that consists of um, uh, three areas um, uh, where there's uh, specialisation and that means in terms of uh, jobs, production, um, and its main feature really is uh, uh, efficiency. That's its driving force. Um, another part of the advanced economy is trade. Um, modern uh, economies trade because they produce more than what they need and, uh, and the whole countries themselves uh, become in interdependent. The last uh, um, point of uh, an advanced economy is the use of money. Money is uh, the medium of exchange that can be readily used as settlement for payment. And uh, generally advanced economies have, have moved towards uh, using money. Um, we, I suppose we don't know of anything else except by using money. And that's because of the features, the, the fact that it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, uh, logical and easy to equate medium of exchange. Um, it's, it's a measure of value that has a common denominator. We can, we can all relate to it, um, um, even between currencies and different types of money. Um, and and it, it's a store value of weakness uh, of the system, such as inflation and so forth. It, it can, um, it can reg be regulated over time. And it also can be used as a, a mean means of deferred payment, uh, which means you can buy now uh, and pay later uh, with the use of money. Decisions need to be made as a result of uh, um, economic problems. Um, and economic problems um, generally arise in, in changes in supply and demand. So governments establish uh, economic policy and, and these uh, 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 can be, I suppose, summarised as six main areas which I've identified here. And by regulating and, and uh, uh, providing incentives in one of these, um, they can help uh, maintain a, uh, a, a relatively uh, e even and stable economy. Important to understand that the, uh, the policy is also driven into two areas as well. Those areas are called fiscal policy um, and, and monetary policy and the various policies for structural state and ch structural change. There's otherwise uh, uh, referred to as microeconomics, which we'll cover in a bit more ta detail in, uh, in topic three. You probably also, uh, I I when we c consider uh, um, economic policy, you'll also uh, uh, probably read about in the notes about uh, Keynesian economics. Um, so th the advocates of Keynesian economics generally argue that the private sector decisions sometimes lead to uh, 
inefficient uh, macroeconomic outcomes. Um, so if that's the case, it requires uh, active policy responses by the public sector, um, particularly monetary policy in the central bank. And really this is what we've been seeing uh, recently, since 2007, um, with, with the the, uh, the markets and and, uh, and central banks in certain countries, uh, um, and even even Australia providing a stimulus uh, to actually uh, uh, create a uh, a positive and, and more uh, stable and buoyant economy. There's a simple diagram here um, showing uh, the uh, the simple flow models, um, and there's two flow models that uh, we talk about in economics. Uh, we talk about the, the circular flow of money and the circular flow of income. Um, the money economy is, uh, is a situation, a uh, market situation, that's uh, really based upon uh, free enterprise and trading through the markets. Um, so examples of these might be uh, flea markets, uh, um, uh, major shopping centres, uh, um, and, and, and local uh, handyman uh, uh, and uh, tradesmen um, that uh, works in uh, local communities. So s simple models of circular flow of income includes goods and services, the money markets, and um, inputs of resources. The circular flow of income, however, includes uh, savings of investment, taxation, uh, import trades, uh, and other injections such as government spending, purchases by overseas households or companies, um, and investments. Um, this diagram here is fairly simple and, and it excludes some of those uh, external factors which uh, um, is introduced into uh, uh, the, the, the flow models. The circular flow of income is used to measure gross, dom gross domestic product, which you've probably heard a lot about generally when they start talking about um, the country and how the GDP is um, um, fairly strong. and. Um, and this is a really an estimated market value of all goods and services produced uh, in a particular country during a particular period. This slide demonstrates the three, three ways of measuring GDP. Um, and the three ways are the income received method, which is the addition of all incomes received by owners and productive resources, um, a obtaining an aggregate um, of income, and that produces the GDP. There's the expenditure method, and this measures the total value of expenditure on goods and service when income earned is spent. And finally, there's the value-added method or production method. This is a calculation of final goods and services produced during a period in question, um, and so it makes up the GDP. Each method um, is often used to provide a check on each other, so they're not often they're not used in in uh, uh, in, in a singular uh, form. Um, and government uh, is, is use, uh, uses this, uh, these measures to uh, identify the, the wealth of the nation as well as how stable the nation is at a particular time. So they'll also use it to uh, measure the significance or the size of a, of a particular industry in a country or in a community. So an example of this might be uh, the building and construction uh, measures appro approximately 11% of uh, GDP, whereas the transport sector in Australia is only around 5% of GDP. So the, the government has a considerable influence really um, uh, over the national economy through this uh, fiscal and monetary policies. Um, and business cycles uh, will generally fluctuate um, in, in some level at different stages through, the, uh, through an economic cycle. And there can be 50 years sometimes between prosperity peaks or depressions, um, or maybe these are just correlations. Different political parties and governments always have varying priorities um, when it comes to implementing e economic policy. However, in, in reality, uh, the primary aims of all parties uh, that uh, um, uh, are in power or, or are looking to get into power, um, th their aims are, are the same and, and generally include uh, those items I've listed above there. Uh, which is the, the employment, levels of employment, economic growth, efficient use of resources and so forth. Just to even consider economic growth there is one of the points. Um, it, it changed considerably between the 1950s and the 1960s. Um, there was an intense economic growth um, and this was considered a high standard of living um, and, and good wages during this period as well. So th this idea changed dramatically wh uh, when many speculative and, and poor business practices in the 1980s and 1990s um, that we see that the quality of life, efficient use of resources um, and sustainability being considered 
the main, main factor and influence on the current economic growth. So economic growth, you can say, really arises when uh, the size of the labour force increases, the population increases, um, there's increased participation in the workforce, um, there's a con continuity and continu continued investment in a regional country. Um, so, and there's also a, a major need and demand to keep up with technological change. The government al also establishes um, policies towards uh, trade. Now, th these are important um, in, in many cases, um, and um, th they're there to protect uh, certain industries in a country um, and, and certain markets in a, in a country too, which can be flooded by, by cheap imports. Um, the trade markets are now becoming more interdependent. Um, in Australia, we're, we're, we're exporting food um, and importing technology. The trend is moving towards a, a more of a deindustrialisation uh, where, where factories in Australia are, are closing down because it's, it, it's, it's really cheaper to import from other countries and actually manufacture here in Australia. So if we look at them generally, we can say free trade, which has no restrictions uh, between us and the rest of the world. And those policies change um, with agreements with different countries. Um, due to different circumstances, and protectionism, where a subsidy is paid to the producer when a, a production of an item is greater uh, th than, the, than the price uh, it would have been received. Um, so protectionism generally occurs where countries are really concerned about the national, e national economic situation, um, and there's a real need to keep the national economy insular and protected from overseas cheap cheap and cheaper imports. There are several ways in which the... the um, uh, the government can consider uh, um, improving efficiencies and, and, and developing uh, the, the market forces. And th they consist of deregulation, labour market reforms, uh, wage policies, free trade and privatisation. And th they're the suite of things that the government generally will um, uh, look for every time to, to improve the efficiencies in the uh, national economy. Having said that, though, uh, the governments uh, can... can uh, develop policy and, and, and uh, to improve the economy, um, but the financial markets themselves are extremely uh, complex and, and in some cases almost fickle. Um, the debt market, property market, futures market, um, there's so many variables uh, and, and so many uh, um, uh, uh, different variations that can occur and, and impact on, on the uh, e economy um, when it comes to uh, production, resources, um, and uh, and labour. To the end of um, the uh, uh, presentation for um, macroeconomic supply and demand, and it's probably a, a good opportunity for you to now read through the study guide and particularly the subject text, um, and and look through the Moodle site for uh, additional uh, resource material to refer to with macroeconomics, as some of the terms might be a little bit different for you. Um, it's also a good opportunity to, to work through those workbook activities as well. And if you've got any questions, please uh, post them to the uh, Moodle uh, Q&A um, or otherwise uh, email, uh, email me directly. Thank you.